Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another video. This time it's a mystery uh, broken junk that I bought off eBay repair, hopefully, uh, time. I have to work on that title. Anyway, you can see a package. It is slightly wet because it was raining outside and I just got home. But, and I'll show you what it is and hopefully we'll take a look at whether it's working or not. I believe it's partially working. So, here it is. It's a bunch of uh, bubble wrap now. So, I've been in a mood collecting uh, various ancient audio stuff, and I found this, a uh, disc man. Wow, this is actually heavier than I thought it'd be. Wow. This is a Sony D9, I believe it is. And, um... It is a disc man. Oh wow, that that feels nice. Doesn't sound very nice, but I think that's pretty much how it's supposed to be. So yeah, this was sold as is. Um, apparently, batteries work. It starts up, it spins up the disc, but I guess it. They said no audio, so I have no idea if that means the audio amp itself doesn't work and it'll play the CD and recognize the tracks, but no audio comes out or if by no audio they mean it just doesn't play the disc, it doesn't even recognize it. So, uh, luckily, this does come with the uh, battery, the AA battery case, essentially. Um, there's also an optional uh, rechargeable battery pack, but obviously those are long dead. So hopefully these two batteries work. This is, this is built like a tank. If I threw this at someone, it would really hurt. <laughs> but yeah, um, I believe this is a backlit screen. And um, it's it's nice and cold because it's like all metal. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, volume control, I guess. Hold switch. Let's just see if it turns on. Okay, so the screen is pretty hard to see. But when I turn it on, it does turn on. And um, I've gotten the disc to spin a little bit. But it seems pretty lethargic. And, um, yeah, the, the screen's just very dim, which is kind of odd. And um, the disc span for a little bit, but, and I could hear the, uh, the laser itself, like, trying to read. So, to get this apart, I swapped to uh, some Antelope, loops, so I had a little more juice. Um, just pretty much uh, in Sony fashion, everywhere where there's an arrow pointing, take the screws out. <laughs> Okay, so I finally got it open, and um, it comes with actually some technical info on here, which is pretty interesting. That's pretty cool, actually. And um, yeah, I just also had to remove um, this screw. Yeah, sorry, this screw. And I don't know if this one was necessary to remove, but I removed it anyway. The All the top ones are for the uh, top lid, so you do not need to open those to... <laughs> to get access to the um, the actual circuit board itself. And this guy was, this is a front lens, it was improperly installed. So pretty sure someone's been in here or it's had a rough life. So we're just gonna do a cursory check, which is opening this, uh, checking the rotor that it rotates kind of freely. Doesn't feel like it's stuck or anything. Um, making sure it's not like rubbing against the frame. Sometimes if a disc is pushed down too hard on these, it can slip downwards, but it doesn't feel like that. So hopefully you saw that spun, but uh, no dice. Just to put a disc in, see if it does anything different. Here it's spinning. Does not spin very much though. <laughs> okay, so I um, lifted these pieces of tape holding the wires down so I can swing this out a bit. And I think I found the issue. The laser is probably working fine. I can't turn this by hand. Sorry about that, focus. 
I can't turn this cog by hand, so the laser can't go in and out. Of course, it's not going to be able to play. Uh, so it looks like the grease that they use seized up on here. So I'm going to dismantle the laser, um, get this part out, clean it thoroughly, and relubricate it using um, white lithium grease. Because I can't even, if I can't even do it by hand, um, there's no way this little tiny motor is going to be able to. So, okay, I found the culprit. This middle wheel that goes between the motor, the motor spins freely. Uh, this spins freely. I added uh, some white lithium grease anyway um, to lubricate it, but it's fine. It's the middle one. It looks like almost, I don't know, either the, the original lubricant gummed up or like it was kind of crystally or crunchy, as odd as that sounds. So something went wrong there and um, the lubricant went off. And it's hard as a nail, like it was really hard getting this off. Uh, I lost, there was a little like a C-clip that pinged off. It was a tiny one, lost that. So I'm going to have to figure out uh, once I get this back together. Hopefully it's somewhere around here. If not, I have a box full of tiny little C-clips from everything I've ever taken apart. Anyway, we're going to clean this um, with isopropyl alcohol, the uh, shaft, as well as um, this guy to get all the old, uh, dried lubricant off and then we'll apply some fresh one spin it around a few times make it sure it all works and then fire it up okay so i finally got it i uh, lubricated everything cleaned it off so now i can pretty easily spin it by finger and um i lost the uh the little c clip or whatever you want to call it so i replaced it but first things first i'm gonna just carefully push the laser all the way outside so that when I get it back together and I do a test, I'll, I'll be able to see it draw the laser inwards. So that, that'll mean that everything's lubricated enough. So this is going to be a little bit irritating getting everything back together, but let's bear with it. Okay, so oh my goodness, I'm getting there. So I push the laser all the way back into the corner there. You can see it right here. And it is moving along. Okay, so I have this open. I remove this uh, front so I could actually observe it while it's operating from the top. It doesn't even need the case anymore, in fact. So if I attach this, press this, turn it on. There we go. I can see faint red coming from the laser, so the laser itself operates. The spindle operates. Um, while it's doing that though, and you can hear it um, searching, seeking, the laser is um, trying to focus, uh, the entire display uh, flickers. So another common issue with these are all these uh, electrolytic caps. Um, once they start to age, the electrolyte dries up, they start to go. So I'm just going to go and replace um, the largest ones. I have a feeling that it's browning out in the laser and all the motors. It um, just does not have enough power. So I'm gonna switch these guys out and see if that helps at all. Okay, so it's been, oh, well, I don't know, like 12 hours since I um, started this. Uh, it's the following morning, and last night I uh, called it quits after I found something interesting. So I ended up, I haven't, I just tacked on some extra caps. Uh, some of the larger caps were leaking. The smaller ones don't look like they're leaking, but I'm pretty sure like all the caps need to be replaced, pretty much. So I rigged up, instead of having to hold the stupid battery pack in, which is starting to get to be a pain, I rigged up a DC-DC uh, -DC converter, set it to, uh, to 9 volts, and I set it up such that I can just plug it into my uber-massive laptop battery pack um, that I wired all the cells in parallel uh, so that it can output 9 volts. Now there's something very interesting. So after replacing all the caps, it uh, stays on and the display is much uh, brighter. Well, not brighter, but um, it's not as dim. So I'm guessing that uh, some of the caps, well, as I said, all the caps in the power supply section are pretty much gone. So replacing them fix the power issue. So it actually turns on now and the display lights up and you can see it's playing the CD. Um, and if you plug in headphones, Audio comes out only the left channel, 
Uh, the right channel, there's nothing, but I haven't replaced all the caps in the audio section. So I'm guessing that's all the problem is. The issue is, um, if I start rotating this, of course it's going to make a liar out of me now. Hey, that is weird. Uh, before, as soon as I... Uh, oh, there we go. It sort of skips. I replace every single capacitor on this board. But you can see it's playing, it's spinning, and uh, you can see that it's having a little bit of trouble, but um, I am touching the bottom of the board. So I can pause it, shut it off. Yeah, so it is actually running, <laughs> which is uh, interesting. Uh, so yeah, every single little tiny cap has to go. Um, other than this one I replaced, I replaced that big blue one there. That's a new one. These two I'm going to have to stick on the other side, obviously. It won't shut with them like this. This was just for testing. I'd noticed um, some of these were leaking particularly badly, um, the larger ones in particular, um, and they started leaking electrolyte on the board. This one leaked uh, bad enough to the point where it started eating some of the traces, so I scraped off. Um, as much of the gunk as I could and I um, had to scrape off some of the resist uh, further away to create points I can actually solder to because it started eating straight through the board. Uh, so I cleaned all that off. By the way, if you guys have never smelled a leaking capacitor electrolyte that's been touched by a soldering iron, it creates a very, very bad odor. <laughs> so I'd advise not doing that. Clean off the board first. But yeah, so basically it works, uh, tracking works. Now I can actually um, skip tracks because the laser can actually move. So it reads the disc kind of fine. Um, I noticed that it tends to read it better when it's upside down uh, versus right side up, which tells me that um, maybe some of the caps in the tracking uh, section, the, uh, the servo laser adjustment mechanism uh, need to be replaced as well. Possibly might need to adjust the gain on that as well, increase it so that it can fight gravity a little bit better when it's right side up. Uh, this player doesn't uh, have any kind of, as far as I know, any kind of like any skip to begin with. So it is going to skip kind of a lot uh, if you move it around, but I was just going to leave this on a shelf anyway. Going to have to definitely fix that audio problem. So all the caps under here need to go and be replaced. But I think that all in all is huge progress. Um, I got this unit and it barely powered up uh, when I first stuck batteries in. Now at least I can get it to consistently power up. It does play CDs. Uh, audio does partially work. So definitely a huge win. <laughs> okay, so I know I said I was done, but I just couldn't let it be. So what I ended up doing was... Um, Replacing more caps. Pretty much everything with a black dot has already been replaced. A lot of these uh, surface mount caps, uh, you can see this one's the easiest, most visible. You could see it was actually leaking and starting to eat away at the, uh, the pads. So I removed all of them with the exception of these two I still had to replace. And um, actually took a, um, a little uh, isopropyl alcohol. You unscrew the, um, the volume wheel and you can actually drip some uh, into these holes, work it back and forth, it was a little bit scratchy. So I'm gonna get this back together, but I have tested and um, both channels of audio work now. So one of these caps uh, in this section here of the board, this is the audio amplifier for the headphone out, uh, was probably very high ESR and uh, wasn't really working that great as a cap. So <laughs> basically I have both channels of audio now. So the only problem this has is it needs to be kind of upside down in order to actually be able to read the CD. So I'm gonna need to replace probably, um, these are the trimmers for the, um, the servo gain. I'm guessing one of these caps in here also needs to be replaced. So I'm, I'm guessing like once I do that, this will be fully functional. <laughs> so yeah, we're up to the point where it actually works. I can get audio in both channels. It just has to be upside down. So definitely improvement. So I'm going to see if I can knock this out and get this fully working and buttoned up. This is so awesome. Okay, final update, I promise. Uh, so I haven't screwed this back together because I literally just finished it. I replaced, um, here if I just open this quickly. I replaced pretty much every cap with the exception of a few which 
I'll need to find some um, replacements for. But if I remove this, you can see pretty much all the yellow ones, all these ones near the tracking, uh, because I was having tr trouble um, loading disks when it wasn't upside down. And I'll show you now. Right side up. Loads instantly and it's playing. So you might be able to hear that. It's in stereo, it sounds good, and it loads right up. I can skip tracks perfectly fine now. Absolutely no troubles at all. Reads the disc like instantly. And there we go. So pretty much 100% functional now. I'm just gonna go through and replace the last, like there's probably not even five or six more caps. Gonna replace all of them and button this up and this is good. Basically this is like brand new now. Uh, so uh, just to review, um, we went from having um, battery troubles running, um, well power supply troubles in general, running either off DC or batteries and uh, we fixed that. Now, after that, we had uh, troubles with um, the laser sticking. Um, mechanically, it wouldn't actually move. We greased up the rails and uh, one of the gears that was sticking uh, so then we could move the laser. Then um, I replaced, I found out that the um, audio, one of the channels worked and it didn't sound great. One of them didn't work. So I replaced all the caps in there. Now we have beautiful stereo audio. Still would only play upside down, so I replaced all the um, the capacitors near the um, tracking gain adjustment and whatnot. This is all for um, the laser part, basically. Now it loads perfectly in any orientation. Still skips a little, but that's just because this doesn't have like actual anti-skip buffering. So anyway, um, <laughs> this basically took me two days, not even two full days, one night and uh, one afternoon and it's fully functional so i'm just going to replace the last few caps button this up and i'm going to rock out so anyway hopefully you guys um enjoyed this video if you have a vintage disc man or even any other a tape player any electronics from like about 80 late 80s early 90s uh, the caps go bad and they start leaking so if you have something that is acting kind of intermittent, open it now, replace those caps. Uh, because once it leaks and it starts eating away at the traces, it will make it much harder to fix um, and to diagnose. So uh, replace your caps um, with modern new ones that are good. For now, this actually works good enough for me to start using and testing. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and beautiful player. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.